Welcome back guys to another video on deadlock. In previous lecture we see a deadlock prevention technique. Let's revise it. So deadlock prevention technique will simply put a restriction on the way the process will send a request to access particular resources. For example, we are using deadlock prevention technique in uh, this system. And now process P1 wants to send a request to access resource R2. Now, deadlock prevention technique will make some background calculation and find that whether this request will lead our system to the deadlock or not. If it finds that yes, this request will lead our system to the deadlock, then deadlock prevention technique never allows process P1 to send a request to access resource R2. So, this is a simple funda of deadlock prevention technique. Now, there are four possibilities for that background calculation. And the four possibilities are breaking any of the one condition. We never allow any of the one condition to be happen in our system. We already see a mutual exclusion and we find out that always breaking a mutual exclusion is not possible. We also see a hold and wait and we find out that a solution is possible but that is a poor utilization of resources and it will also increase a waiting time of the processes. Now in today's lecture we see a non-preemptive and circular wait. First of all let's see using this uh, non-preemptivity again taking the same example here process P1 wants to send a request resource R2. So in background calculation, first of all, we find out that uh, resource R2 is already hold by the process or not. We find out that uh, resource R R2 is already hold by process P2. So we check that P2 is preemptive or non preemptive. If we find out that process P2 is non preemptive, it means until the job is not done, we can't get resource R2 back. So we never allow process P1 to send request resource R2. Now in second case if we find out that process P2 is preemptive then we simply get a resource R2 back and allow process P1 to send a request resource R2. So here using non preemptivity we can achieve or we can prevent our system from the deadlock. Now let's see last circular weight condition. Now in this circular weight condition we are using a mapping function f which map or every resource r to some natural number n and uh, we follow one condition and the condition is that suppose the holding sorry uh, holding holding resource is ri and uh, uh, the requesting resource is r a and the value of holding resource is must be, must be less than the requesting resource r a now let's see how this works Suppose in our system we have two process P1 and P2 and two resource R1 and R2. Now suppose the value of R1 is 3 and the value of R2 is 5. Now process P1 wants to access resource R1. So first of all it is sent a request to access resource R1 but first we need to check the condition. Now right now process P1 not holding any of the resource so we don't need to check that condition and the permission is granted and r1 is allocated to process p1 so now process p1 holding resource r1 same thing at uh, p2 wants to access resource r1 now first of all we need to check that condition but uh, p2 not holding any of the resources so permission is granted and r2 is allocated to process p2 so P2 already holding resource R2. So 
P2 holding resource R2 and process P1 holding resource R1. Now process P1 wants to access resource R2. So before sending the request, we need to check that condition and the condition is that, that uh, the value of holding resource must be less than the value of requesting resource. So value of requesting resource must be greater than check here. The value of requesting resource is 5 and the value of holding resource is 3. So we can send the request. So process P1 can send request to R2. Same thing happens here. Process P2 wants to access resource R1. So before sending the request, we need to check that condition. And the condition is that the value of requesting resource must be higher. Here, the value of holding resource is 5 and requesting resource is 3. So process P2 cannot send the request to access resource R1. And hence, using the circular weight condition, we can avoid the deadlock. We can prevent the deadlock. Now, uh, you might have a question in your mind that how to assign those values, right? So, how to design these functions? The designing of that function is simply follows the nature of any process. What is the nature of any of the process? How this process will uh, normally act? So, at the starting uh, process, any of the process might request for input devices. Then it is request for storage device and it is request for output device so based on this we assign a value to the resource so if the resource is, is input device the value is less very less than the storage and output device so we simply follow this funda to assign a value to the resources so if process holding uh, storage device and requesting for output device then the request is granted if the uh, request uh, the process is uh, uh, already holding input device and it is requesting for a storage device or output device then the permission is granted but if any of the process holding output device and uh, requesting for input device or storage device then we cannot allow that process to send this request. So, this is a simple funda of uh, uh, designing the uh, deadlock prevention technique using circular weight. Now, again, here we have a problem of, of poor utilization of resources. Same disadvantage as a hold and wait condition. How? Because suppose any of the process is holding output device and it is looking for input device. Then it cannot send a request to input device. No matter that the input device is free or not. If it is free or not, we cannot send that request. So until the job of output resource is not done, we cannot use this input device. So we might have a, a problem of a poor utilization in this deadlock prevention technique. Okay, so this is enough for today's lecture. Uh, if you have any queries, here is my contact detail. You can mail me on vishaltag999 at gmail.com. You can message me on Quora also. And here is my WhatsApp number. You can WhatsApp me and ask your queries. So that's it bye bye and please 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 guys don't forget to subscribe to my channel please like my videos and share it as much as possible thank you bye bye